Welcome to Relation Tales. Please like this video and subscribe Relation Tales. At the age of 29, I, Van Mitchell, was a fairly happily married man. My wife Gloria, 28 years old, is an intelligent, personable woman. The only constant sore point in our marriage was my desire to have children as soon as possible. She did not have this desire. The other two characters in my story are Britta Thomas, Mae Nielsen, 32, and her husband Carl, 36. Britta and I both worked at the same company. I work with computers, while she works in human resources. Britta is the kind of woman who you might fall in love with if you had the chance to date her. She's kind, smart, good at what she does, and very attractive. She's tall, about 6 feet, which might be too tall for some guys, but not for me since I'm also tall. I sometimes daydreamed about seeing Britta without clothes, but it was just a fantasy. At the start of the story, Britta and I weren't close friends, but we were friendly. We were part of a group of employees who went out for pizza together once a month. We even sat next to each other twice. My only real one-on-one -on -one contact with her occurred when her computer shut down at a very inopportune usually. Someone from the IT department would immediately help the HR manager with her computer. But that day the flu was raging in the IT department, and the only two employees who did not get sick were assigned a system-wide update, which could not be postponed because a possible malware was detected in the system. Since Britta and I were with the group at lunch two days ago, she called me in a panic. I went straight to her office. Having fixed the problem in 10 minutes, I performed diagnostics on her computer since I was there anyway. And she agreed with this and was able to extend the 15-minute work to half an hour of pleasant communication. Although there is no need to go into all the relationships of the characters since elementary school, I need to tell you a little bit about myself to make this story realistic. I'm usually intellectually lazy. Although I had enough innate intelligence to graduate from a decent engineering school, I spent most of my time playing basketball, chasing women, exercising, and drinking. I don't do any of this anymore except for training. I work five days a week. I do my job well, but I'm not obsessed with it, and I don't do more than I'm supposed to. Sometimes, like any guy, I watch adult movies on the internet. One day, while browsing a new website with photos and videos of amateur women, I saw a woman with the best body I'd ever seen. Her face was blurred in the photos, which were taken secretly. I saved the photos on my laptop at home. There was one photo where her face wasn't blurred, but it wasn't clear. I kept looking at these photos every week for a month, but that's all I could do for now, just look. Our company likes to hold family events. On Saturday, towards the beginning of July, we had a party at the boarding house where there were all kinds of entertainment, including a swimming pool. After a few friendly volleyball games, I was sweating and decided to go for a swim. So I changed into a bathing suit, took a quick shower so as not to pollute the pool water, and went out to the pool terrace. I saw my wife Gloria, who looked very beautiful in a bikini that I thought was too small for a corporate event, sitting on a chaise long, sipping my tie and talking to other women. I quickly kissed Gloria, went to the deep edge of the pool and made a perfect, in my opinion a strong splash of water which he caused. It is better never to repeat, swan dive from a height. When, after several dives, I was climbing the stairs, coming out from the deep edge of the pool, a picture of an attractive woman appeared in front of me. Despite the fact that the tall woman was wearing a rather conservative closed swimsuit, it was impossible to hide how seductive her body was. While I was looking at her from behind, wishing I wasn't wearing sunglasses, she stopped, took off her hat and sunglasses, put them on a chaise long, and continued on her way to the diving board. I saw her face when she did it. It was Britta. While watching her, I noticed something on her right thigh, just under her buttock. It looked like a mark from a photo in the best photos folder on my laptop at home. There was a spot in the photo that looked like a birthmark or a tattoo, similar to a star. I tried to be discreet, but I wasn't very sneaky. I followed Britta for about 15 minutes, hoping to get a better look at the mark. Finally, when I followed her up the stairs by the pool, I got a clear view. It was indeed a birthmark that looked like a four-pointed star. After that, I got dressed, got Gloria out of the pool, and we had lunch with some other couples. When I returned home that evening, I took a close look at my favorite photo and enlarged it as much as I could. There was no doubt in my mind that the photograph showed Britta's mark on her right thigh. When I heard the shower running in the main bathroom, I quickly turned off the computer, undressed, and went to Gloria in the shower. When I found out that it was Britta who was naked in photos on the internet, I couldn't figure out what to do. I thought about her blurred face in five photos. I thought about just ignoring it all. I thought about telling her about it anonymously, and I thought about telling her in person. Every action or omission had potential consequences. I was still thinking about it when I went to the website, where I found two more original photos of her in a short video. 
The short video did not show her entire face, but her chin and hair were visible. At that moment, given that I knew how conservative Britta had always been, I was sure that she did not know about nude photos and videos on the internet, and if she found out, she would definitely want to delete them. Then I realized that I had to do something. The first thing I did was try to reconstruct her face in one of the photos to make sure it was her. At the same time, if I could do it, it meant that others could too, and Britta certainly wouldn't want that. It was bad enough as it was. I called my only college fraternity brother who majored in computer science. Unlike me, he was really diligent, and I knew he had earned a master's degree. After showing him this shit, I said what I would like to do, without explaining why. He replied, First, you have to figure out which application was used to blur. As soon as you find out, contact me and I will send you the appropriate software tool. He then gave me instructions on how to identify the blur application, warning me that it would take a long time. After working for about 15 to 20 minutes a night for a week, I finally found the right app. That Friday I sent an encrypted email to my colleague, received the right tool as an attachment to his reply, and then it took me a while to make a recovery. We had a busy weekend, and it was only on Sunday evening that I used this tool, as instructed by a colleague. I used the most provocative photo where her face was blurred. After a few minutes it was not blurred, it was Britta. I made Gloria go to bed early. By Wednesday afternoon the following week, after a little introspection, I decided that the best approach was to provide Britta with information from open sources in person. An anonymous email, even if it was sent to her personal email address and not to her company's address, could be problematic. I really liked Britta, and if she had killed the messenger, I would have been very sorry, but it was the right thing to do. As luck would have it, on Wednesday we had one of the pizza days. Both she and I were present, but not sitting next to each other. During the three-block walk back to our office, I separated her from the crowd and, after a little chat, took a deep breath. Britta, there's something really important that I need to talk to you about. Do we have time this weekend so that we can meet alone for a maximum of 20 minutes? I think so, Van. What's wrong? I'm sorry, but I'd rather not talk about this here. Let's wait until we're somewhere private. I promise I'll tell you everything you need to know. Van noticed the serious look on my face and the sweat on my forehead, so she suggested we meet at Planet Fitness in Chesterfield on Saturday morning after her training. She'd be done by 9.30 and we could talk at the park behind the building. She offered to meet there as early as 8 a.m. Even though I usually go to a different gym on Saturdays, I agreed to join her. By then, we had already returned to our office building. Britta and I worked out at Planet Fitness on Saturday morning, although it wasn't really together, as we used different equipment at different times, except that we used elliptical cardio machines side by side. She was a real fan of training, which partly explained how toned her body was. She was the object of lust for almost every man present, although she showed no sign of awareness about it, let alone interest. I got a few jealous glances when we were on the elliptical simulator, and occasionally chatted. We didn't take a shower after training, but around 9.40 we dried off and went outside on this magnificent morning. I took the envelope out of my car before we sat down on a secluded park bench, each with a bottle of water. So, what's the big secret? Britta smiled. I decided it was best to use a direct, very direct approach. While browsing a website with adult content, I found some nude photos and videos of you. It seems they were taken secretly, without your knowledge. There are eight photos and one video. Your face is blurry in the photos, but I managed to restore one of them when I suspected it was you. This envelope contains copies of all the photos, including the one where your face is clear and a website where they and the video can be found. At first, Britta thought it was a joke, but when I handed her the envelope, she became serious. As she opened it, she gasped in shock and covered her mouth with her hand. She didn't show me the photos, and I avoided looking at her. Then she softly screamed and cursed, unsure of what to do. She stared at one photo for a long time, then hit my arm, showed it to me, and asked, Is this the photo that made you realize it was me? Of course it was the one in the back view where her birthmark was visible. I nodded my head in the affirmative. Is that why you were sniffing my ass at a corporate party? She asked. Her tone wasn't accusing, but it wasn't friendly either. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I'm not. Uh, I knew you were. Uh, I noticed. I muttered, feeling my face turn red and sweat break out on my forehead, but not from training. I do not know if this makes you more or less a pervert, but at least it explains everything. She snapped, making me blush even more. As she was clearly considering what to do, I felt the urge to explain myself. Listen, Britta, I've been thinking long and hard about giving you this information. I only did it because, judging by the photos, you didn't know anything, and I'd bet a million bucks that you didn't know about the video. If you need my help to remove them from the website, I could help, but the desire must come from you. 
Britta stared at me for a long time while I blushed and sweated even more. Finally, her expression softened and she said, I didn't know anything about these photos and videos. It's clear to me that my husband Carl took them and published them, and he'll damn well pay for it. I understand that it was difficult for you to do this, and despite my initial reaction and my embarrassment that you saw these photos, I sincerely thank you for this. With these words, she quickly kissed me on the lips, which scared me. Then without further ado, she put everything back in the envelope, stood up and said, I promise I will destroy them. I replied nervously. Wait until they are deleted and then do it, was her unexpected response. A few days after the Sabbath revelation, a lot happened. These events are in no particular order. Britta quarreled with her husband Carl. From what I learned from the rumors, and later directly from her, she threatened to divorce him. Gloria started behaving strangely. She wasn't usually moody, but now often, unlike usual, she was a little bit more reserved. Her behavior became aggressive, detached, or playful, sometimes all within the same hour. A few days after our meeting, Britta invited me to lunch. There, she explained to me that despite her and Carl's efforts, the website, based in Eastern Europe, refused to remove the photos and videos because they are the most popular content they have. Britta seemed very down, not as cheerful as usual. Later that evening, after our lunch, I visited a guy who was known to be a hacker, wearing a black hat, although he considered himself more of a gray hat. I told him about the website that wouldn't delete the photos. He said he could help for $5,000 and for $10,000 he could guarantee that the photos and videos would be gone forever. I showed interest in his offer. That evening, for the first time, I called Britta when she was at home. I explained what the black hat hacker could do and how much it would cost. I assured her that I could act as an intermediary in the process. I also, why I took such a risk I do not know. Maybe I was thinking with my small head and not with my big one, guaranteed that if they were not removed, I would pay half the cost. She sweetly declined my offer of payment. It's not your fault. All this happened because of Carl, and he will pay one way or another, but accepted my offer to be an intermediary. I got the money from Britta, and on Saturday morning I tracked down Damon, the black and gray hat. When I gave him the money, I exaggerated a little. I told him that despite my degree, I could never match him when it came to computers. How wonderful the woman who was treated unfairly was. How grateful we were, and I even shed tears. He swallowed it. Damon called me on Thursday night the following week using a disposable phone. Check the website, he said with a chuckle. You're a fucking genius, I blurted out. Everything went a little better than planned, he continued. The jerks running the site had a big hole in their security system, which they paid for. The grateful one said with a laugh, When I brought this to their attention, I became $100,000 richer, so I'll refund you $10,000 if you and your friend will come to pick them up. I was full of gratitude again. I checked the site and the photos and videos really disappeared. I immediately called Britta at home and told her about his proposal. She was confused. You mean because he found a hole in their security system? They gave him $100,000 and took my photos and videos. I chuckled. That's what he meant, but I know that's not what happened. It was a ransomware program. He shut down the site and wouldn't have given them the key to unlock it if they hadn't paid him $100,000 in bitcoins. When he unblocked the site, the offensive material was deleted. Holy shit, was her reply. On Saturday morning, we went to visit Damon together. I knew damn well that he just wanted to see her in the flesh, and I prepared her for how to act. We want this guy on our side, I smiled. Britta played it right, complimenting Damon and hugging him tightly twice, because she was ten times more beautiful than any other woman who had ever touched him in his entire life. He had a smile as wide as Mississippi. As we were leaving, she told me, there's no way in the world I'm going to tell my husband that I returned the money. It's going to be hidden in the company safe in the HR department. When I dropped her off at the house, there were tears in her eyes, and she said, you have no idea how grateful I am and then gave me a quick and then a long kiss on the lips. I swore never to wash my face again. So, now you can come to the conclusion that this story has ended happily for all its participants. But don't let yourself be fooled. If you have lived long enough, you should know that no good deed goes unpunished. I felt really good on Saturday. However, I was still puzzled by Gloria's mood swings, as she went through about ten different changes during the day and night on Saturday. We had a great time at the dance club with friends, despite her mood changes. She left a cryptic note saying, I have some errands to run. When she arrived home, she was angry. She accused me of pretending to be innocent and threw something at me, which was the first time she had ever done that in our relationship. She knew I would never hit her back. She said that a week ago, someone saw me kissing another person in the park, and the day before, I went out with them and kissed them again. She mentioned there were nude photos of this person in my desk drawer. 
and that I made a fool of myself by following them around at a corporate party and a pool. I yelled back, saying I was just helping her, not having an affair. But she didn't believe me and shouted that she knew everything. To prove her point, she grabbed her phone from her purse, opened her photo gallery, and showed me a picture from that day. There were a couple of photos of her making love to some man, but whose face was not visible. And then a short video. There could be no mistake. Everything was dated today, and she was wearing rings, and her hair was styled exactly the same as today. I immediately got up and sent the photos to my phone, despite her attempt to stop me from doing so. I just went into the bathroom and leaned against the door, and she didn't even have the strength to open it. When I came out, she was defiant. So you think you can fool around, but you don't like it when I do it. In as calm a voice as possible, I said, The reason Britta kissed me on the lips and your friends or spies saw it was to thank me for deleting the nude photos that you saw on my desk from the internet. They were placed there without her permission, and when I found them, because, as you know, and never minded, I sometimes watch adult films, I told her about them. I'm going to call her now and you're going to talk to her, otherwise I'm going to throw your naked ass out the fucking window. I had never talked to Gloria like this before, and I could see the combination of fear, apprehension, and defiance in her eyes. I pushed her onto the bed, put the phone in my pants pocket as I pulled on my pants again, and then used the landline to call Britta on her cell phone. Fortunately she picked up the phone. Hi, Wang, how are you? She greeted me, obviously having seen by the caller ID who the call was from. Hi, Britta. Listen, I need you to tell Gloria everything about your nude photos, our interactions where they were posted, how we deleted them, everything. It's very important that you tell her the truth about everything. Uh, good, I think, was her timid reply. I'm going to give her the phone now, I continued, and then handed Gloria the phone. I had no desire to hang around here. I took a quick shower, got fully dressed, sent the marriage-killing photos Gloria showed me to my computer, and then went out for a drink for the first time since college. As a result, I got high, which I swore I would never have again after graduation. Then I went home by Uber so as not to get into an accident. I was surprised when Uber pulled up and saw Britta's car backing out of my driveway and going the other way. When I stumbled into the house, I was greeted by a repentant Gloria. I gave her a piercing look. I, I, owe you an apology, she sobbed. Oh, really, what the fuck did you do that for? I growled at her. Britta showed me the recordings of her meetings with you. And it became clear to me that you and she were not having an affair, and you were just helping her, but you should have told me. It was news to me that Britta was recording our conversations. I figured technically it might be breaking the law, as our state requires agreement between both parties. But I didn't have anything to hide, and in the end, I was relieved she did it. Despite my state, I was alert enough to cut off Gloria and yell, Yes, you're going to sleep with just anyone without listening to me. Then I stumbled into the guest bedroom, locked the door, put in earplugs, and fell into a restless sleep. When I woke up on Monday morning with a hangover, I didn't know for sure, but it marked the end of my marriage. Gloria's refusal to talk to me, followed by her extremely hostile response, was too much. Even though I went to three counseling sessions with her, it didn't help. I just couldn't handle it anymore. So, a month after that Monday morning, I filed for divorce without even touching her again. I was trying to get Gloria to tell me who her boyfriend was. Even when I lied and said it could save the marriage, she obviously didn't believe me. She knew I would be furious, so she never gave in. As soon as I served her, I informed her, Be sure to tell your friend that if I ever find out who he is, I will beat him half to death. Since it's not my way to hit a woman, he'll take your place. After that, Gloria realized that there could be no apology, or anything like that she could do to save our relationship. So the divorce went through quickly, dividing everything 50, without any alimony for either side. We sold the condo, and moved into apartments on opposite sides of the city. At that moment, I was really happy that we had never had children. Britta and I remained friends while my divorce was going on, and she even joined some of my friends who took me to a baseball game. I never drank again. To celebrate my divorce, which took place just four months after Gloria's paperwork was filed. We never discussed the circumstances of my divorce in detail, but from the fact that she met Gloria in person on that infamous Sunday, it was clear that she knew most of it. Then, two months after my divorce, Britta came to my office on Thursday, I don't remember her doing this before, and closed the door. Wang, can I invite you to dinner tomorrow night? There's something really important that I need to talk to you about. I had my own plans, but you could bet your sweet ass that I would cancel them all because then I could stare at Britta and because I became very curious. Of course, I replied. When and where? How about we meet at Morton's on Vine at 7 p.m. in casual clothes? She smiled. Great. I'll see you soon then, I replied. 
She smiled again and then left my room, leaving the door open as if she hadn't noticed her. It was obvious that Britta was nervous during dinner. In fact, she lost her temper to tell me what she wanted while in the restaurant, partly because we were sitting next to several other couples. She suggested we talk in my car. I tried to pay at least half of the dinner bill, but she refused. There are some things in life that you can easily predict. Others are actually unpredictable, but do not cause much surprise. Others strike you like lightning thrown by Zeus. What Britta wanted to talk about belongs to the third category. We opened the windows a little, and she mostly looked straight ahead while she was talking, sometimes meeting my eyes since I was looking at her all the time. The essence of her statements shocked me so much that it is difficult for me to forget them. Carl continues to beg me not to divorce him and does everything possible to hush up the matter. He just doesn't believe that I don't trust him anymore and that fighting the divorce won't help him. That's a big part of what's going on because it's such a breach of trust that it hits my mind. However, it's also because he doesn't think it was that important in relationships with other people. He's far from noble, and in general his character is not what I imagined when we got married, Britta said inside. Besides, I want children as soon as possible, and although he said he wanted them before we got married, that's not the case now. There was too much information for me, and at first I couldn't react in any way. So what do you want to talk to me about? Well, I came up with a way to make it very clear that everything is over between us, so that he doesn't resist the divorce I filed for last week, even though we still live in the house together. Since you're the only man I know, other than Damon, I think, but he doesn't fit in every way. Who's seen me naked, at least in photos. You're the right person for this job, Britta said. I was taken aback, but I kept my thoughts to myself. Britta seemed nervous as she continued. I want Carl to walk in on us in my bedroom, looking like we just had sex. You can keep your boxers on, and we'll pretend to start getting dressed. Britta went on, sounding determined yet apprehensive. It'll work. Is Carl capable of violence? I asked. He's not violent, and he doesn't have any weapons, Britta assured me. There is nothing in the house except kitchen knives, which I will hide. And you are 10 centimeters taller, 15 kilograms heavier, and from our gym classes I know that you are in shape, but he's not, and you're twice as strong as him. Britta blurted out in one sentence, clearly very worried. Can I think about it? I asked. I know you could do it, but if you can't I have to find someone else, and I can't think of anything as effective. She quickly replied, yes, I could. Would dancing relax you and help you make a decision? I think yes, it would help. I smiled at her. Let's head to that new dance club on Brighton Street, she chuckled. So, we went. I was excited. Britta's a great dancer, and she fit perfectly in my arms during Latin American dances and slow songs. At 150 pounds, she wasn't too heavy for my six-foot frame, and she didn't have extra fat. I noticed she wasn't used to being lifted when I saw her in a swimsuit and at the gym, but I could lift her just fine. Though I didn't drink, and Britta rarely did, I think she used alcohol to calm her nerves after our conversation in the car. By the time we left the club at one in the morning, she was pretty tipsy. I didn't want Britta to drive, even just the mile from the restaurant where her car was parked to her house. But she insisted she needed her car the next morning. So I dropped her off at her house, receiving a quick kiss on the lips and a thank you, took her keys, walked a mile back to the restaurant, then drove her car to her house and left the keys in the mailbox. The mile walk to the car gave me time to think. After I tossed things back and forth, my divorced, uninhibited self told my more cautious self, at least you'll see her live. You can stop yourself from acting like an asshole, so do it. Who knows? I tried my best not to think about the rest. On Sunday evening, I called Britta and said, I agree with your plan, if you still want to go ahead and think it will work. Thank you very much, Wang. Yes, I want to do it and I know it's going to work. She practically smiled on the phone. So, on Friday, I was at Britta's house by 4 p.m., I was nervous. Britta was nervous. Even the inanimate objects in the master bedroom seemed nervous as we waited for Carl to come home. I probably asked four or five times when he was most likely to arrive, but Britta wasn't offended that she had to answer so often. Perhaps because of her nervousness, she did not remember that I had asked her before. Any time between 4, 30 and 5 o'clock, she said. I was naked except for my boxers, but the rest of my clothes were laid out so I could get dressed quickly. Around 4.40 in the morning, we heard the garage doors open. Then, we heard someone place what looked like a briefcase on the kitchen table after opening and closing the inner garage door. As footsteps approached the stairs, Rita followed our plan and took off her robe. I acted like I was putting on my pants. I tried not to stare at Britta, but she looked even better in person than in the photos. It was obvious that there was no need to touch up her pictures. Carl pushed open the door of the master bedroom, asking, Britta, you're here. When he entered, his eyes bulged out of their sockets. Britta gasped. 
Good game. And then said, I'm sorry you had to see this, Carl, but I told you it was over between us. You had to accept it. There was an unhappy expression on his face that, if I hadn't known all the many good reasons Britta was divorcing him, would have made me feel sorry for him. He sighed heavily, making a sound that was somewhere between a squeal, a sob, and a cry, staggered for a few seconds, then turned around and left. We froze when we heard him coming down the stairs, heard the inner garage door open and close again. His car started, the outer garage door closed, and then silence fell. All this time I was expecting Britta to start getting dressed. She didn't do it. Then she came right up to me and said, I'm sorry it was so sad, but it had to be done. Thank you for your help. Then we made love. Britta spoke first. Thank you, Van. It was wonderful. I chuckled. I must have had an out-of-body experience because I thought I just heard the hottest woman on earth give me and then thank me. Can't we thank each other? She giggled. Hell yes, thank you, goddess. After a few pleasant conversations in private, she had a shy expression on her face. I have to confess something. Um, I was hoping that it might end up like this. Not for the world would I be able to resist you, I replied, and then kissed her passionately. As far as I remember, the bone of contention between you and your ex-wife was your desire to have children, and she did not have such a desire. And correct me if I'm wrong, but don't you have the same desire as me? And doesn't Carl have the same desire as Gloria? A wide smile appeared on Britta's face. Do you think we want to have children together? I know that's going to happen, but let's have an affair first. Since Carl is unlikely to come back, why don't you pack a bag and come to my place for the weekend? Will there be room for me in your bed? She giggled. It's big enough, so if we mess up one side, we'll just move to the other, I joked. That works for me, she laughed. We got dressed, changed the sheets on her bed, and put the ones we used in the laundry room while she packed her bag. She followed me to my apartment in her car. After I made her a light dinner, we spent the rest of the weekend figuring out if we were compatible. Although our trick on Carl was cruel, it worked. Britta spent most of those four months, while their divorce was going through the court system, in my apartment. We made a plan to verify our compatibility, and stuck to it. Fortunately, after the first month, there was little doubt that we were as compatible as possible. There were no major problems outside the bed, either. Our biological clocks seemed to be synchronized, as well as our libidos, and we had a lot in common as well as enough differences to really make life interesting. Since we worked in different departments of the company, and were not part of the same management tree, our relationship, which we did not hide from colleagues, did not have a negative impact on our work. However, there were several disappointed people who would like to get a chance with Britta or with me, but they were discouraged by the closeness of our relationship. The day Britta's divorce became final, I was glowing with happiness. After celebrating without alcohol that night when we went to bed, we had the most sincere lovemaking of our entire lives. I've never felt more at ease when I bluntly told her that I love her and want to spend the rest of my life with her. Britta smiled and kissed me. I love you too, and it's lucky that we love each other, because I have some news. A meaningful pause, and finally, I'm six weeks pregnant. I was too shocked to say anything. I just did as she said, and when I finally got ready to answer, it turned out that she was fast asleep, and I soon found myself in dreamland, too. The next morning I kissed her, and then took her face in my hands. I'm not sure I heard you correctly last night. Did you say you're pregnant? Yes, about six weeks pregnant, she smiled. How did this happen? That was my next question, which was so absurdly worded. No, I mean, didn't you take birth control? I got my pills mixed up, she replied with a big smile. I thought you were giving injections. I broke my schedule, and this is my story and I'm sticking to it. She replied this time with an even bigger grin. I think that means I'll have to marry you. Then he joked, does your dad have a shotgun? I bet my ass that there is, and he won't let his little girl have babies without a ring on her finger. She retorted this time with an even wider smile. You think I'll agree to whatever you want, huh? I pretended to be mad. Her smile widened even more. Yes, but your reward will be that you'll be the happiest man alive. Ten years later, life wasn't just good. It was amazing. It felt like we fell more in love every month, and we adored our three children, two girls and a boy. Sometimes the three women in our family teamed up against us, the two men, but we always managed to get through it, even if we didn't always win. The best part, besides watching our kids grow up, was that I didn't have to look at pictures of what I thought was the best female body anymore. Every night, I got to sleep next to a real woman with the best body. Every day I take a few minutes to thank Carl for posting these photos online and Gloria for her overactive imagination and impulsiveness. Second story, found out he was cheating after his son died. The question I need answered is at the bottom. 
Here's my situation, in case it influences your answer. My fiancé and I have been friends for 13 years, in a relationship for three and engaged for one. His son was 11 when he passed away in December right before Xmas. So even though I've only been his stepmom for three years, I've known his son his whole life and always loved him as my family. When we became a family, it only intensified. I found out three weeks ago that he has been cheating on me the whole engagement, more emotional conversations and connections than physical sex but it's all bad to me. Because one connection was with his ex that he kept saying was crazy and stalking him but that was a lie, he is still in love with her. However, as hurt as I am, finding out he cheated after the death his son is bothering me the most. I always stayed away from him romantically because he was a womanizer. Even when we got together, I didn't expect him to change his ways considering I never saw him have a long healthy relationship. Just always two three girlfriends in drama. I'm by and at one point, we had a three-way relationship with the ex. I loved her too and enjoyed the dynamic but she couldn't handle being second to me, so they broke up. When he proposed Feb 2023 he promised he was ready to be a one-woman man all the way. I said if you're not ready, let's wait. He promised. Great lie. Sep 2023 we had an engagement party, and I was happy and proud of our family as the three of us. It felt like it was so close. His son suddenly passed away four months later, and our world was crushed. I am so mad that in the midst of our grieving, he decided to cheat. And when I asked him have you cheated since the tragedy, he lied. Then I found the truth and be admitted he did it cause he could. Like, because I trusted him 100% he took advantage cause he knew I would believe him. I am also bipolar so when his son passed, and he would be away for so long at night I just had excessive obsessive thoughts. To quiet my mind I would say to myself he is grieving he just needs to clear his head now to think back and wonder which nights he was cheating and which nights he was just getting some air makes me so mad. It's so selfish to cheat in general, but to do it now makes me so fucking angry. I'm already mad my stepson is gone. I feel it daily and I loved him but since I didn't birth him, most PPL don't check on me. Only his parents, and I fully understand that, I just grieve alone. My fiancé knows how much this hurts me too, and I'm mad he didn't think to stop cheating now that we have a bigger mutual painful halt. Most couples do not survive the loss of a child, and we both know this, but had I not found out, he wasn't going to stop. His selfish behavior towards women always pushed me away. I'm not surprised he hasn't changed for me. I'm just upset he proposed. We merged families, we faced the loss of a child, we're going through so much, and he's still the same. Whether it's good or bad, nothing has changed him. I'm so angry, I'm furious about everything. And he's asking for one last chance to prove he's changed. But honestly, I feel like I'm wasting my time. He says I'm the perfect partner, and being in love with your best friend is something he can't replace and doesn't want to lose. But I just feel foolish because he did exactly what I've been expecting for over a decade. As a faithful woman, it's not hard to be committed when you respect and value your partner. It hurts so much to be so small, as considering how much we've been though these 13 years as friends to lovers. Are there any cheaters, promiscuous PPL in here who actually stopped and became faithful? I would love for my fiancé to be one, but I doubt it's a realistic expectation. Edit, I do not expect him to change. I just want to see if it's happened to anyone or if they changed themselves. Since he had always been promiscuous I'm not surprised, I'm just mad as hell. I thought proposing was a showcase that he had changed fully. I know now that it meant nothing. Thanks for joining us on this chapter of Relation Tales. If you were moved by these stories, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Don't miss out on the upcoming emotional roller coaster of relationships. Your support means the world, and we can't wait to share more compelling tales with you. Until next time, remember, every relationship has a story worth telling. See you soon.